Well, hello everybody. It's wonderful to have you with us. I pray wherever you are that you are blessed. Well, we're going to continue in this series, Overcoming Our Giants. And to be honest with you, as much as I'm giving this series and reflecting on this series and praying through this series, I have to be honest, I've found aspects of this series for me personally to be very confronting. Uh, you kind of think, well, I'm going to talk about it. It'll be for everybody else. But I've really found myself wrestling with this whole idea. I, I remember being younger and I suffered from tremendous shyness. And I still find myself very shy at times when I go into environments when I don't know anybody and, and, I, and I feel a bit nervous. I know people would not think that, that I maybe it was like that. But I, I do find myself being really shy. And I've found that shyness at times can be one of those great uh, uh, giants in your life that prevent you from experiencing the fullness of life that you call to. And so today, as we reflect on this whole idea of how do we step forward from where we are, the story of David, uh, David, who was made king of Israel, was anointed first before he actually became king, is a fascinating one. And again, it gives us an insight as to how he overcame not just Goliath, but the Goliaths in his life. He, he was someone who was anointed to be the king of Israel. He came to Saul's home, who was the, the king, and he served him in many ways. And then he ends up killing uh, Goliath and he became very popular. And the, and the women used to sing these songs, Saul has killed his few and David has killed his thousands. And, and Saul became very jealous. And on six different occasions, Saul attempts to kill David because he's fearful that he might get overthrown from his throne because David is so popular. And David's got to make some decisions. David can make a decision to run away. David can make a decision that he will himself first go and kill Saul. Uh, and David has to make a choice. What is he going to do? See, the interesting thing about our giants in our life is the giants in our life, the secret challenges in our life, that often we're the only ones that know, those things speak to us. And they require us to make decisions about how we are to behave. David, he refuses to, he refuses to, be, uh, uh, to, take, to become aggressive towards Jonathan, even though on six occasions we read in the scriptures, that Saul tried to kill uh, David. He refuses. And, and, and he says that he will not raise his hand against the Lord's anointed King Saul. And even though those who followed him tried to encourage him to, to take Saul out, he wouldn't do it. He shows the complete, absolute and utter respect. And there are occasions when he was right next to Saul where he would have been able to, hidden in a cave at one point, he would have been able to take the life of Saul, but he refuses. In our life, when we're facing some of the difficulties and the struggles, whether it be something like shyness that can prevent us, uh, whether it can be being uncertain about ourselves, whether we can be someone who's, who doesn't have the confidence that, that maybe we want to have in our life, because all of those are giants. And when we can talk about the mistakes of the past, we can talk about things that we have done or not done. We can talk about all of those sorts of things. But, but the giants in our land are things that rob us tremendously. My, Rose, uh, my wife, Rosemary, has often told the story of uh, if I was shy, Rosemary was shy at a completely different level. And one day for Lent, many of you would have heard this story possibly, one day for Lent, she feels like God says to her, what I want you to do is I want you to give up being shy. And she, she uh, for her, that was, was tremendously difficult. At the time, we, we knew of each other, but we, didn't, we were not going out. And I remember we both went to a dance, uh, a dance and, and at this dance, uh, the guy who was leading the dance, he said, it's ladies' choice. Ladies, go find a guy somewhere in all of the, the room where you are. And Rosemary came up to me. Well, and she, said, and she says it was purely because she was trying to in, this, to, in this whole idea of Lent, to overcome shyness. See, overcoming shyness is a decision. The fruit of that decision 
is born out in 38 years of marriage. The fruit of that decision is born out in five children, 10 grandchildren, and the amazing things and (laughs) the hard things that have come in our life. But it came down to a decision. Right now, there are things in your life where you need to do what David did. You can choose to do the negative thing. You can choose to remain in the place. You can choose to blame. You can choose to, to, uh, uh, to run. Or you can do what David decided to do to make sure that you made a decision to make change. David's decision was that he wouldn't confront Saul. And he waited until God elevated him to become king of Israel. And, and for us, what sometimes we have to do is we've got to make sure that we make a decision away from negativity to life. Make a decision away from remaining the way we are to change. How do we make those decisions? For some of us, for some of us, maybe you need to go and see a professional counsellor to work through some of those areas of your life where God wants to bring you healing and through a counsellor that, that can happen. Maybe it is going and seeing someone that you respect and talking through with them the things that cause you fear, the things that prevent you from being all that God calls you to be. Now you can stop and say, well, I'm 50 and 60 and 70 years old. I don't need to do that. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. I have found speaking to wise people has been one of the great things that that has helped me in my life. I wouldn't be where I am today. If it, if it wasn't for that. Sometimes it can be as simple as privately sitting yourself down and talking to yourself and making deliberate decisions about what you will change in your behavior, in your actions, and also training your mind that when your mind begins to go in a place where fears and, and uh, hurts of yesterday, you grab your mind and you say, it's no longer true because I've asked God to come into this situation, which is the final thing we need to do, where we ask God to come into our situation and to bring healing and wholeness to us. Overcoming our giants very often is a decision. Maybe we need someone who's got some professional help and and we should never be embarrassed by that. Never be embarrassed. You never want to be embarrassed by doing the things that are going to cause you to be the, the person you want to be and to bring blessing to your family, to those you love, to your work and to be all that you can be uh, because of, of, of some crazy thought that seeking after that by maybe talking to a professional, talking to someone wise is a reflection of you. We all need that in our life. David chose the right thing. He just chose the honourable thing. He wouldn't fight back. He wouldn't be negative. He would allow God to work in his life. And that's what all of us need to do. And so today, as you go through this day, think to yourself, where are areas of my life where I'm not the man, the woman I want to be, the person I want to be? What do I need to do to overcome that? How are those things, whether it be shyness, whether it be a lack of confidence, whether it be the fact that you were abused by someone when you were young, whether it was the fact that you've made some mistakes. What do you need to do to address those things today? Because God wants to bring his healing and his wholeness to you so that you can be a light on a hill to yourself and to all the people around you. This is a really important word today. It's confronting to me and I'm sure it is to you. Can I encourage you today for my benefit, if not for anybody else's, you don't have to share anything private, but it really helps me to, to read the comments that people make. I don't ask very often people, people make comments, but if you could make some comments just to let me know how you're thinking, what you're thinking, uh, how you're experiencing this, and maybe what God is doing for you and what you get out of this, it would help me tremendously in being able to plan out, go forward, and just to encourage me in my own life. And that, that, uh, that there is people out there that are being blessed by all of this. Hey, thanks for being with us. Uh, I really appreciate it. I thank you for standing with me. Um, I'm very grateful. Someone said to me this week, I listen to you every day and I feel I really know you. I think I said that yesterday and uh, it was very sweet and I'm grateful. So hey, write, write, a, write a comment and I'd be appreciative. Hey, loving Father, I thank you today that you call us to break out of the places that hold us back from being the person that we are. Lord, it can be as simple as shyness or a lack of confidence that can be so gigantic that they prevent us from being the best mother and father, being the best retired person that we can be, to live completely fully alive in our life. To, it can rob us of our teenage years. It can rob us of our young adult years. Lord God, allow us to overcome our giants and do the things that we need to do so that we can experience your blessing in our life. And Father, we ask this in the name of Jesus through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all, everybody. See you tomorrow.